Right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. Can you see me? Uh, yes, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Well, I've just pressed record on the video camera. That's fine, yeah. So I'll just say that, you know, this is the first time we've ever spoken. Yeah. Apart from a few comments on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. So, and, uh, and it works. Good. I had a couple of problems with my audio, so I had to fix that quickly. No, it has to be, yeah. Very good. Cool. Are you comfortable? As comfortable as it can be. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit weird. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever Skyped a stranger before? No, I don't think I've ever Skyped before. No, me neither. Yeah. Um, also, you might hear yourself when you speak. Is that not normal, no? Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's normal, yeah. <laughs> But you might hear you might hear an you know an echo because I've yeah. I've got to have your voice. To, also, got to make sure you're loud enough for the video camera. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear an echo? No. It's pretty good. I can't hear my voice twice. No, sounds fine. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Because I'm looking at you. So yeah. I'm I'm not looking at the camera, so it's almost like we're not having eye to eye contact. Oh uh, yes, yeah, because my camera's above. If you yeah, look at the camera, like then it feels now it feels like you're looking at yeah. me, but <laughs> we're both looking down a bit. So and anyway, it's not as good yeah, as that makes sense. not as good as one to one conversation, but. <laughs> Yeah. So you you're gonna you want you're gonna put it up on YouTube afterwards, yeah? I am, if that's yeah. you know that's Ooh, yeah, okay that's with fine. you. And you know, I'll put it up whatever happens. If I end up making myself look like an idiot, I'll still put it up. Um Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay with me too, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then suddenly I thought, shit, is Dublin an hour ahead or something? You're at Cork, you're in Cork, aren't you? Yeah. 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 But you're the same you're on the same time, aren't aren't we? Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Um, yeah, so in your comment, um, you said, you know, because I like the way you write. You're very, you're a bit like um, James Joyce, I think. <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> can be hard to understand, but yeah. like, if you get a feel from it. And yeah. um, so you're saying about spirits in your head, and the description you gave. I thought was very similar to at times you know I'll sit down and I've got calm and peace and everything and yeah. there are occasions when I've got it's like another voice in my head yeah saying things which don't seem to fit with me yeah and um, and if I sit there and feel about it I usually can feel a presence of a spirit yeah and uh, I have sort of explained before that I actually feel it on the bridge of my nose like there's a there's two ways of feeling it I'd say there's a there's a feeling like through the soul that yeah. you can get, feel that spirit like we'd feel another person but then if you if you're meditating and you and I, well what I do is I sort of get to feel God here and here but I before I was able to do that I had felt like I had this permanent pressure on the bridge of my nose. So now, if that can come back, if you like, and I can feel the spirit presence like that, and I can, then I can feel if I've got a spirit with me or not. Yeah. And I was quite interested to see actually if you had dark patches around your eyes or not. <laughs> and I can see now that your yours are very light. So I would say. Because I I think I've noticed and I've heard other people say this that um, someone who is sort of got spirits with them all the time will have dark patches around their eyes. And yours yeah. look very light, so you look like you're. <laughs> I'm glad to see that. Because <laughs> if I saw dark patches around your eyes, I would have been. Well, I'm not sure. 
<laughs> whether I should say this or not, but yeah, so you I you look clear from that point of view. Yeah, it's it's quite um quite uh, made that you said say that because usually when I would go through an emotion of some kind, that that is the first place I would actually feel the relief is actually in what feels like the bones of my sockets. All right. So that's the first place I actually feel about it. You know, it's like when you just become aware of something, or um, uh, it's like a refreshing feeling in my out of my eyes. Yeah. Okay. It's quite is when it, when it would happen, and that was before I even looked into anything to do with spirits. Right. That would have been just going through emotions. That was before I even heard of um, of of um, Mr. Miller. I uh, even at that stage, like so. Um, I I don't know. I never. Not, even before I even started looking into doing this as as a deliberate process, yeah, you know, which is which you know which is great, like doing what sort of helping yourself. Um, no, deliberately saying well, well I, I can't run from a feeling, so I want to just see how strong I can get and how large I can get and see if there is something on the other end. You know, if it's uh, well, if the only way. So to when go. so when did you first think of that? Um, I. I think it was around when I was, around when I was a teenager, when I didn't really have a choice but to, but to feel it. And it's kind of the first instance where, um, I kind of had an a, uh, you know, questions about hypnosis if if uh, how good or bad it was. I noticed how some people claim to feel a lot better after hypnosis, but I didn't really understand what the hypnotist was doing. So. What I was doing was just copying them by lying on my bed and imagining that my arm was switched on or off or my legs were switched on or off. And then I was wondering, like, is to do it, um, I think as um, Terence McKenna calls it, the Gaia mind, um, the, all the minds together on the earth. And there are times when you think they're talking to you and there are times when you know they're not. And you're saying, well, you know what? I never thought that before, so why why would I get this type of suggestion into my head? Um, and as you were saying earlier, you know, you get something in your head saying, well, you should do this, or you should do that, and then I'm thinking, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> why would I even, you know, why would I even think that? Yeah. I'd never have come up with that as a suggestion before. And so rather than ignoring it, I'd hear what it has to say, and and then... You know, just then, then go about my business. You know, so I think I just went on a, a mighty tangent there. From no, no, that was fine. That, no, it brought it round to the point yeah. actually, and yeah. um, like so, you dealt with them in a sense by ignoring them. First, which yeah, is probably yeah. which is probably a good thing to do because, like in a sense, you know that's that's probably what God would do if someone was displaying behaviour that wasn't yeah. fit with God, you wouldn't do anything actively nasty or, you know, yeah. Yeah. so, so that, that way they, they'll get bored and leave you alone eventually. That's it, I suppose, when they, if have they're negative. they have to say, they can go. Yeah, yeah, and they can be positive and negative. It can be. <laughs> and, and really, it's just like, it's just like real yeah. people in, in yeah. your life, you know, and, some of them we're forced to be with our family sometimes and work colleagues, you know. Yeah. And some are good and some aren't. You know, some are kind of feel positive for you and some feel negative for you, don't they? Yes, well, you have a, a nice positive word to, that encompasses all those experiences called tradition. <laughs> <laughs> right, what do you mean by that? Um, just mean that, uh, you know, when... You might have said, well, we have to get together because it's tradition, regardless oh, yeah. of you like each other yeah. or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Christmas party or something like that, you know. <laughs> no, and, and but what's good about family is I think they, they really know you. Yes. They've known you a long time, you know. An older brother will have known you longer than you've known yourself almost. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so I think, I think family is... Do you get on with your family or...? I do, yeah, yeah. How many you got? <laughs> um, two, two brothers, and I'm in the middle. Okay, uh, same so, as me. Yeah, so anything I do or say, you know, is just treated as normal middle child syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Well, we both got that. Yeah. And yourself? 
Yeah, no, well, it's got an older and younger brother, and my my mum is still alive. She's she, yeah. she lives quite close to me, and my dad is died about two or three years ago. Or I sort of think okay. of you know has passed on. Yeah, I've had plenty of dealings with him since he's <laughs> passed on. Yeah. Uh, so actually, just a dream last night I had about him in a yeah. So uh, yeah. What about you? They, your parents still alive? Uh, they are indeed, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, sp uh, split uh, about 17 years ago, but still alive, yeah, yeah, still talking to them, so. Okay. Was there anything you wanted to carry on saying when you were sort of talking about the, the, your, how you deal with spirits now? Um, what if, yeah, it's just something I, I recently came across um, in, within the last, I'd say, two weeks. Um, what I found was, I was wondering how much of my life is led by the expectation of others. And it was something that A.J. Miller was talking about in the most recent playlist that they put up, the most recent um, assistance groups, I think it's 2.1. Right. And Edge was talking, I think it's the Lessons in Love series, the newest ones. And I was thinking about the expectations and how how his face, his expression would change when and he'd he'd say to one of the audience members that you're now expecting me to feel all this for you. And his expression would completely change, like as if he was in uh a level of distress to some extent and so I was just thinking to myself um, this, that's a bit of a strange you know turn of, of a facial expression so I decided to look into how much of my life has been led by the expectations of others and what came to mind was the, the what actually came to my body was the feeling and the power of those expectations upon us only because I feel that they push us off our own path or our own purpose, whether we know that or not. And anything from being on the path, I f we might feel as a little bit of pain, just from deviating from that. But this, the level of the feedback of this, this energy, um, is obviously you know in 37 years of hindsight so it's not like it, it happened to me yesterday you know like I'm not one years old on a path having taken a little deviation you know so the the expectations I was wondering what kind of expectations are on me from spirits now they can't directly influence my life as much as a parent or a family member or a friend or a or the or a policeman down the road can do, but they could nag away with suggestions, I think. So I was wondering what what kind of power do they really would a spirit really have to influence someone? Well, I think you know that's it. You know, it can be those prolonged nagging and hints and stuff. Yeah. You know, and if if it's a spirit. I'd say, you know, if a spirit was with you for a long time, they've yeah. got quite a vested interest in your life. Yes. So yeah. it's quite likely it's going to be a family member, an ancestor. Yeah. And then, yeah, so then you're going to get the sort of expectations to continue in the good Irish way. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, uh, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah, it's doing that well. <laughs> I'm pretty ignorant. I, I I have got an Irish mate, so I do know a bit, a few things, but I'm pretty ignorant, really, on what that is. Whether it's drinking lots of Guinness and, yeah. you know, having your... Well, I suppose they're, most of them are scared of their wives, aren't they, a bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spend as much time in the pub as possible. And, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't know the, the weirdest thing about it was when feeling expectations and the effect they had on my life, that... I found out once I went through the worst of it, or what has happened to me in the past, um, I actually felt I didn't feel a need to drink alcohol. I was actually saying, do you know what, this actually doesn't taste nice. And I 
just put it away. Yeah. And the same with my, my appetite is, well, from a different point of view, it might be called my appetite, but from my point of view, my need to overindulge in any kind of food or eat, even just eating a larger portion has changed also. And we were over, myself and my fiance were over in London recently for a football match. And I had half a vegetarian breakfast in spoons, and I was full. I couldn't finish <laughs> it. But normally I would have eaten the large one. Yeah. No problem whatsoever. <clears throat> um, the need for meat has dropped off to eat meat. It wasn't, uh, I was looking into whether was I, is it just, was just a discipline to begin with, to take six months off to drink or to eat, to eat, to eat healthy or to, you know, to change other things that I may have, thought might be more loving to myself and others whereas this after removing the expectations or or to continue to do it or having removed the bulk of it i find that i don't need to have a discipline to not drink it just simply faded away you know so uh, whether it comes back again in about six months to a year for some other reason i don't know but yeah uh, but certainly the pub here is the um Getting the alcohol and getting to the pub and having the crack is certainly, um, if I didn't know better, it seems to be the best suppressor, you know, for the for the in in Ireland anyway at the moment. And that besides you know overindulging in food or whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with me it's cannabis. I like it, but I do take breaks. So I'll, yeah. I'll have a week off. I've just recently had three weeks off. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> I was very looking forward to having a, a good old split. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think we all have a vice. Yeah. And you know, anyway, we won't go into that for the moment. I wanted to ask you about when you said in your teens, you had these feelings that you couldn't run away from anymore. Yes. Do you think that was the feeling of these spirits, of a, or a spirit, that was a that that's been sort of want having expectations of you or was this some type other type of feeling um with the i feel that well the expectations i feel were already on me because i didn't have a a, a like a food or alcohol substance you know or violence way to go so i didn't really know how to well other than you know eat eating as much sugar or, or drink as much sugar as possible. There wasn't really an out for that. So then I started considering things I hadn't considered before, which was a strange thing for me. So I was I would just lie in my bed. I wouldn't I wasn't big into going to um to the Friday night teenage discos or anything like that or or to go um you know um drinking cans in some hedge in the middle of nowhere, you know, in the local, in the local park or something. And it wasn't, it wasn't really for me. I seemed to enjoy like lying back on my bed and, and f seeing what, what, what kind of ideas would come into my head or what kind of new experience would come in. And like I said, I use them. Um, I, I, I have a very kind of a picture, you picture were imaginary. You were into hypnotism as well. You, you were, into that as well. well Read a book it, or it was watch. only when I started training as a hypnotist, I only realized that the, you know, pretending my legs were there and not there, and pretending my I was, you know, I was only just a head lying on a pillow, that these were the kind of things that were involved in the training and the hypnosis. So I was already doing these techniques, right, in order to not feel, say, a pain in my gut when I was a teenager. I see. Okay. So from you know feeling yeah. that that kind of thing, but. Where the ideas came from, I, 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 I don't know. No. You know, I want to, you know. So what, so, so when you talk about feelings, like the ones you experienced in your teenager, what, the ones you say you couldn't run away from, would that be like fear and things like that? Yeah, there's... Um, Sadness? They'd be all in, like, they, they'd all be inside in those bags labelled as such, fear and sadness. And there would have been the physical effects, emotions, like, like a touch of IBS or so, you know, like a just like a sharp pain in the gut or something like that. That that would be there, and I wouldn't know how it got there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah, probably probably fear. I'd say be the top one, and then maybe sadness as a resultant of that fear and being stuck in that fear. Okay, so you were so you didn't you don't feel like you felt it and completed the. 
process? Um, I don't, I don't think so. No, because I would have been in, I would have attracted. I, I feel I attracted those situations to me. So these kind of feelings will come from a live, from live events. So like every day going to school or every day I at see. home or right. Know, so. so what? Yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay. So have you done? Have you since you know listening to AJ and stuff? Have you begun to feel any emotions? Do you think? Have you completed an emotion, should you say? Well, the strange thing was, um, it was before I seen, I ever looked at AJ's videos, I, I went through, I was, when I was doing the training for the hypnosis, I started, decide, I decided that if I feel this in its entirety, see what happens in the other side. And I was big into... Um, learning self-hypnosis and if I could regress myself to the moment something happened. So I would get the images and know what happened but the feeling of how I felt during those instances whatever it may be a trauma or a prolonged instance maybe of something like saying a small bit of bullying over the space of six months if I could remember when I started and finished and maybe the maybe the, the worst days in between. So when I do that, I, I just hit something completely crazy, and you know, I I was. I felt a sense of ecstasy first, and then a few days later, I felt a real sense of my self esteem being crushed, and this was at the age of thirty four, thirty five, so two or three years ago. Now I wanted, I went and searched on the internet to find out what was going on. I couldn't explain it, so I went through a process. And I couldn't explain what had happened. I, I had no idea how, I know, I, you know, kids can't explain their feelings, and neither could I, even up to this point. And I'm still trying to find a way. So I went in search of, did anyone know about this? And I found a book by a man in L.A. called uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith, who seems to have had a similar experience. But he just opened his own ministry, um, a, a multi-denominational or industry, I was going to say, but, uh, you know, ministry, I was going to say, and there was, um, I listened to a heap of audio books, I listened to, do, I was working a night shift at the time in a factory, so I listened to um, the Bible about seven times an audio book, so that got me through a, a full year's contract, <laughs> so it was good to have all, good to have all that time and that, and an easy enough job, um, and when I, I typed in, I couldn't, because I couldn't come up with the words, I typed something into the internet. And it was something like feeling emotion or, um, I can't remember the exact phrase I put in, but it was like two words. It was like kind of like, um, like a Google whack or something like that. And I only got like one and one thing back. And it was a video by AJ. And when I saw him and Mary on the stage, I was like, oh my God, because... <laughs> About five, <laughs> yeah, pardon the pun there, but <laughs> um, I had seen them on Sky News about five years ago, I think, five or six years ago when they visited London, when they were doing the, um, I only knew afterwards, they were doing an assistance group in, in England, I'm not sure where in England, but, and I saw them on Sky News, and he goes, that guy, I believe, is Jesus, and there was Mary with him, and they were on Sky on Sunday morning, or Saturday morning, I can't remember what it was, and I said, I had a feeling that I'd be seeing them again. I said, well, hopefully, because they seem like nice characters, even if they do look a bit uh, BS crazy. But so, and then when I typed into the internet, I found, I saw his site came up, and there was him and Mary, and they started explaining all this stuff. And I was saying, I was happy that, I'm happy that it's, uh, that he's giving an explanation. But there's a, you know, there's a lot of things that I feel or, imagine and, and I can't explain it and you know I'm kind of hoping that he might you know move it along a little you know maybe to <laughs> level two or something you know <laughs> yeah yeah but I can see how he wants to you know help people on the level so when was that when did you discover AJ Miller then um it was at that point it was after about I'd say six to nine months of searching the internet and books and everything just to find an explanation. What year was it? Uh, it was, <clears throat> I think. Yeah, I think the best about emotion, emotional work is that you lose all sense of time. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't anymore. matter, yeah. 
<laughs> no, roughly, I mean... Roughly, I'd say it might have been, might have been about two years ago, maybe it's Two years ago. Two okay, years. so that'd be... that's Because I, I can remember, it for me, it was August 2014. Yeah. So that was about the same for me. Yeah. Okay, um, okay. yeah. Yeah, no, so that's... Um, sorry, I sort of took you off your thing a bit then. But no, that's uh, that's quite interesting. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so because I don't want to turn this into a slagging off AJ. <laughs> I know, that, I understand. That. Um, yeah. But you know, because would you say you see him the same as me? Sort of like it's really great that he's came along. It's almost I would say like essential, but you still yeah. have to use your own discernment. You can't just take everything he says as pure truth because. He's not yeah, right exactly. About it's, that's 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 where um, I think that's what that's what it is. Actually, it's just before just before you called, I I opened the dictionary and uh, just marked uh, an X next to that word credulity or credulity. Sorry, credulity. Right, yes. The tendency to be to believe something with uh, little or no evidence, and you know I, uh, that it looks like it already comes from an objective opinion. So. Um, if the, if the Bible was written by someone spiritually, I think we'd have a very, very different Bible. <laughs> well, yeah. Bible, so. I put the Bible dictionary in the... Dictionary even, dictionary. Oh, sorry. yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd put, that in the same cat I'd put that in the same category as well. Whatever you read yeah. in the Bible, you can't just take it as God's word. Yeah. I mean, that's my opinion. Is Would you share that opinion? Um, yes, absolutely. And I think, like... Um, it's it's always going to be a lamppost, you know, well, not a lamppost, it's always going to be a, a point where, you know, I think a lot of people, there's probably a lot of people hanging around that point already, you know, and it's just getting more and more populated with this issue of it, because once you, I think this is a line that, you know, once you cross this line, you, you change, you know, it's not about being able to scientifically prove which is right and which is wrong or which is which is truth and which is which is false but i think once you discover it you automatically cross that line and there pretty much is no there's there's no wanting or no needing to, to go back okay. there's no more self-doubt there's no more anything like that and that's that's a kind of a hard thing to explain from someone who hasn't really passed that point yet if if what i'm saying is true of course you know <laughs> Which is what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the very that there's a the what that there's a soul and a god and everything like that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Ad 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 admitting to, admitting to have a connection to that truth. You know, without without trying to without trying to sound like the most arrogant person on the face of the planet. You know. So yeah, so you feel you've got a connection to God's truth. I feel there, yeah. I feel there is a connection to some truth, whether it's the, it's not. I wouldn't know if it's truth about God, God's self, but a little bit. I need to know basis for truth. Okay. For the little things that I'm doing, the little bit of emotional for, work for your myself. for your life, in a sense. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, as I need it right now. So you thought you lead your life. You kind of go with your feeling. Yeah, it's like the, um, not not um, I suppose what comes to my mind is um, each new experience I don't patch and repair and go go about it and leave it wounded. I like to replace it for what the truth is about the situation and why it happened or whatever, whatever whatever ingredients needed to be added to it in order for it to have to feel like it never happened. If that makes sense. Um, so you can like you yeah you feel like there's nothing holding you back from some past exactly, experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like without being a broken vase that was glued back together, it's like the cracks disappear. That was always a, a kind of an image in my head. The first time I saw a vase that was cracked and glued back together, an antique vase, um, to be able to transform from like you your the, the cracked vase that's glued back together, um, you're managing to stay together. But you can add a bit of truth and the cracks disappear. 
as if you never broke them in the first place. Okay, yeah. Like, you can still remember the incidents, but it's just like, you know, just like seeing something in an old toy shop that you used to play with or something like that. It doesn't bring any nostalgia or any feelings. It just, it's just there. Like, um, I don't know, like an old movie or something, you know, something that's been and gone. And okay, but, you know, could that be the same if, if you'd got to the point where y you, you'd shut off all emotion? Yeah, does that, that, that question is always there as well. Um, have I completely suppressed? But, but what, were you, what were you describing a minute ago? Yeah. That sort of fresh feeling, that it's a good feeling when you've got, you know, you've got, you've sorted things out. You, yeah. You, you're, you're on level, whatever it is, you're on level ground sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a nice feeling. So yeah. if you're feeling that, then you haven't shut off all emotion, have you? No, no, no. Um, I suppose I was kind of speaking in regard to the 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 people when I'm like when I would be around the people before the situation has. Um, we say the energy in the situation has dissipated, and when I see the person again, I see them in a in a new light. You know, um, when you go through a certain amount a certain amount of emotional processes. Um, then you look at someone and despite anything all you can feel is you know like a little I might feel a little pressure at the back of my eyes my nose like I want to you know like start to you know cry for with a little bit of happiness for being in just being in the in in close proximity to these people who were in the past I would have felt a sense of fear so it's the, it's the, it's the, not so much the going from something to, to, to nothing, but the magnitude of, of a repulsion to an attraction. You know, because that around people, but you know, around, around objects and things like that, then, then, it, you know, the things that don't uh, express feelings. Yeah. I and, wouldn't, you know, feel. So, like and you've made these changes by remembering parts of your life and... Yeah, and and I mean, feeling whatever feelings came up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so whatever feelings I I'd invite the feelings, and my my mind to give me these images or whatever. Um, and I what I do is I, without um consciously focusing on the images, and the first image that comes into my mind and blame that. You know, I wouldn't be in the habit of doing that. I um I wait to see like I I go through it in its entirety, and until I feel it's finished. And when I feel it's done, then I, you know, when I, when I feel it's done, it's done. Um, if I was to take it piece by piece in my mind, then, you know, I could be there for the rest of my natural life. And then only, what, remove a fear of spiders or something like that, you know. So I, I, I'm not, <laughs> I want to, I've, I've, I enjoy the process. I enjoy the magnitude of the feelings going up and down. And sometimes they can get very difficult and I do, you know, start you know waving my arms around like a seven-year-old child or a five-year-old child or a three-year-old or wherever well however far past, um long ago that the incidents occurred so um once what? i feel them in their entirety watch them like they're watch them like it's a really really bad, bad movie badly made movie and then when it's done it's done but what i found was the most difficult the most difficult entry requirement to the process is to have patience and to not be distracted not allow yourself to get distracted you can have sounds around you but just not let them distract you not let anything take your attention from it mm -hmm. and once you once you once you can get into that then it can it can you can go through it like you're on a bobsleigh and it can be done in 20 minutes you know so um, okay ones take a bit longer of course yeah when you started this, you said, don't always judge it on the first image. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the second or the third. <laughs> 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 it could be, like, it could, you, it could be... Because it just made me think sometimes, like, I remember when I was doing, doing exactly like you say. Yeah. I saw myself a couple of times um, discarding the first image. Yeah. Because I didn't want to go there. Yeah. And in a sense, 
I, I get what you're saying, but I like when I sort of got this image of, you know, the first image was like this girl hanging by her neck, naked, one leg cut off, and I wanted to go and whip her butt, right? Yeah. And, you know, I saw myself about to discard that and say, you know, just why would I think I like that? But then actually start to think, actually, yeah, my view of women is a bit warped. And if I'm in the presence of Mother God, you know, how do I feel about that? And then a, f a feeling began. Yeah. Now, like, I use cannabis to help me do this. And I, I honestly wonder, because I think the cannabis raises the lovingness of your soul temporarily. And with a more loving soul, you're more able to feel Yes. So, because you said, like, you go through a kind of a sequence yeah. of images, and it may last however long, I'm, <clears throat> I'm wondering if you're, like, staying on the surface. And that, if you like my, you know, you, I don't know how many of my videos you've watched, but you've commented on a few, so yeah. you, you're aware that I'm claiming to be the seventh Christ? Yeah. Yeah. So, in terms of that, I do, I have wondered how I was able, if you like, to sort of go through these. And I think yeah. can, cannabis helps is one thing. And it may be that I've had some sort of, or I haven't had so many generational injuries. Yeah. So that I've, I've, I haven't had such a harsh thing to deal with as might prevent me from doing it. Yeah, I understand, yeah. That makes sense. So now that I've brought this up, <laughs> do you, I mean, because I sort of said in my video, you know, I welcome challenges or any questions, you know, yeah. and you said you'd like to do this recording. So is there anything, you know, you'd like to ask or do you have a, a challenge for me on what my belief system is? Yeah, one thing... Um... Okay, the one, one, I suppose, okay, so um, the, the question I would have is have you had experience of um, being able to hold on to that transition into the sleep state or have you had experience of the sleep state? Yes. Yeah. So. And, was there at the, was there in the beginning was there a, was there what kind of uh, difficulties did you have by during that transition to being able to remember or to to even um like i'm not sure which words to use but i'll just say just transition into being able to to stop and be aware of what you're doing those no gaps well yeah it was it's i've i've had an experience in my life where i've I've, and this was when I was 19 in Africa, right. I, I just had a massive spliff, because I realised, you know, it's out there, it's natural, and you could smoke as much as you want, and we, there were no cigarette papers, so I had to use exercise book papers, okay. and I thought, why haven't I just done a massive one yet, <laughs> you know, yeah. and so that night I was going to sleep, and well, I was laying down, and what came in front of me were three images. The first one, I remember, was just white space with six strawberries. Okay. The second or the third one was uh, Missile Command, an old Atari game. Yes. And there was like lightning coming down. And then there's another one I can't remember. Then it took me into a, a, a weird sort of image with a triangle and I've done a video on that because I think there was some significance in that. That happened twice in a row. And then, then I guess, well I suppose there may have been a gap then when I was asleep. But in the morning I could remember all my dreams all night, all the way until those two last images I had as I was going off to sleep. So oh, okay. I, I did feel, from, from having that experience, I did feel like, first of all, I was confident there were no gaps. But 
also I read more recently I've I've noticed what I'm about to do as I go off to sleep yes and it was when I was first making myself aware of what I might be getting up to in my sleep state yeah because especially when you smoke cannabis quite often I wouldn't remember my dreams and I realized that was a, a clue to as I might be getting up to something I don't want to admit and basically, yeah, I must have been in brothels and stuff quite a lot. Because I was going off to sleep and straight away there's two naked women right there. And then because I'd wanted the realisation, I woke myself up from it. And then yeah. I realised this is what I'm doing. So from that, I guess, I don't really think there's any thing in between. So because when you when you first asked me that question, I was thinking... Oh yeah, maybe there's this sort of lock between awake and sleep. Yeah. And that made me think of those that that night that experience I had with those with those images, but I think that was actually more of a code like the strawberries, the missile command and the thing I can't remember, a yeah. code to get into that triangle vision I had. Oh, okay, okay. So sorry, that was off on a mag massive tangent. But so in answer to your question, <laughs> in answer to your question, and um, there's times when I've been meditating, and if I'm tired, say I'm sitting on this chair, and I've been meditating, I've woke myself up because my neck's gone limp. Yeah. So I was just thinking, and obviously I was a bit tired. Neck went limp, head went back, and that woke me up. So does that answer the question? Um, it does, yeah. It was um, like it seems to have like if okay. So if you went there once, and then you know any intention to go back there just to um, to to see what you're doing is is more like driven by a simple intention to know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. 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 Because that's how I first. That's you know I sort of heard that from AJ because when I'd first heard AJ Miller. I basically got into a position in life where my emotions were pretty flat. And yeah. I, I thought that was the way to be. You know, not being manic depressant. Because sometimes I'd find myself being really happy and I wouldn't know why, sort of in the past. And then a few days later I might be quite down. Yeah. So then I started to sort of not allow those happiness. If I didn't know why I was happy, don't be happy because... <laughs> it's not right. Sure. So I sort of got myself into this position of flat emotion. Yeah. So then it was a struggle for me to sort of get that first emotion. And I did it by asking God as I was going to sleep, you know, if I've got some fear I'm not feeling, can I feel it? And, and it worked. And I, I remembered this dream I had back when I was 16. It's all about the ghost of my um, Norwegian grandmother and their house and I felt that f that feeling which I found fearful which I would have before suppressed yeah and then just no you know come on let's go through this you we can do it and just going through it and I went all through the house and all the scariest bits you know feeling the feeling yeah and then you know because after a few seconds you think well you know this isn't this isn't that bad and then, you know, and you feel like you finished it and you, well, you feel great because, yeah, you've achieved something that you didn't want to do before. Yeah. For, for whatever reason. Yeah. What, what I love about the, when do, do, doing those kind of things in particular is that I go in looking at, I, I have all my so-called conscious evidence in a box and I go into, into, the, into that kind of thinking and say, right, well, here's my clues, and I take them all out, and, you know, it changes into something completely different, something I've, I, I could probably have never, you know, uh, considered or dreamt of before. And all of a sudden it said, well, I think, well, how, wondering how could it have anything to do with what, I'm, what, what, what it was just shown? But then it doesn't matter because it's over and the, the feeling is gone. So, um the more, well, uh, you know, well, I, well, I enjoyed the going through a process and uh, feeling something and then getting a completely cryptic kind of a video playing in my head and not knowing what it was even about. Um, 
But I, you know, sometimes I would like to have a bit more of a bit more of a fluid kind of human kind of like a uh, like a more like a, a scripted process. You know, it's something like like I'm watching a movie, like so I can actually understand what was happening or where I came from or anything like that. Um, and just and to give an example of that, recently I visited some friends of mine up in um, up in Belfast, and we were going through. I was I had a a real big desire to, to. To re to to get back what I thought uh, something I lost when I was young, which was. Um, part of a communication tool uh, for me to go directly into the the emotion that I want to to work on um, and what happened was I was getting this like um, like a feeling I couldn't speak and all I could say was the words fix and like I could feel like like it was um you know it was to do with me and all I could hear was the word fix. And my, my, my body started shaking like it was really, really cold. Um, I could feel my, my nervous, it was like all my nerves were kind of rattling. Um, I could feel like a, just a slight pain over one of my ears. Um, and then, then in the center, which is over between my eyes as well, it was just on the bridge of my nose as well. And after, I couldn't make any sense of it. It was like a, like a, like a, um, it was almost like a maintenance, like um, someone came and was just working on, on my head. Um, and then after about, it was about, I, I, well, again, no counts of time, because somewhere between 20, 20, and, 20 and 40 minutes, I'd say, um, I just felt that relief over my eyes. And, you know, ever since then, um, everything seems to be happening a lot faster. You know, so, I, so I'm wondering, where is this communication actually to? Is that like without without using too many you know hypnosis terms or psychology terms or anything like that, um, that that place between when we're conscious or what we might call awake, to when we're falling asleep, to when we fall asleep. So I think just below our level of, or conscious or subconscious as they call it or what I call it, not being conscious anymore, that we're actually in that place where. We can speak to all these spirits, we, we can hear them clearly, depending on the level of blocking that we have. And if you want to go deeper down to relax from it, we can go to our own place then by just simply falling asleep then afterwards. So <clears throat> one thing I've been doing recently, right, is um, trying to find, um, I, think to, I, I think I'm asking for the wrong thing. I'm asking for stuff that's very plain English, saying, show me why this happened, or show me why that happened. And I'm wondering, <clears throat> what kind of questions would I have to ask to attract someone that can show me exactly what I need or what I'm looking for? Okay. Is there a certain guide, or is there a, a light being, or is, do you have to ring a certain department in this place? <coughs> I think the quick answer to your question is your mum and dad. Yeah. God. Okay. But um, sort of what you were saying about then is 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 kind of a, a level I've I've glimpsed it. Yeah. But I've almost I've almost wanted to skip it. Yeah. Because I I can already sort of if you like get on a deeper level, which is yeah. just purely the feeling. Yeah. And haven't you ever had a haven't you ever had a feeling where there's inf information attached? You know, yes. you get a feeling and then, then then there's a knowing afterwards. Yes. So, if you like, I, I'm not looking for it to be worded in English or... Because I often find as well, when you get a feeling, you put your own label on it. Yes. You know, in your own language. So, you know, it just comes, doesn't it? Like, like the fixed yeah. thing. And when you, they're saying the fix, you know, that could, you may have had a little brain tumour and by you relaxing and getting into a mode, your immune system was able to sort it out. Yeah. Now, I often think we feel healing, but we don't feel the affliction. Like you can get a boil on your back or something and you never even felt it come. But if you were to heal it, you would feel it. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. But so, uh, so I think, you know, because like I say, I, I, I have been, sometimes when I've been feeling, I have been thinking, you know, maybe I could go into this sort of, like you were explaining it quite well. I think once I've glimpsed it, and I was basically sitting here, and then I could see all around me in a sense, but it was green. Yes. And there was a guy standing there. And as I noticed the guy standing there, if you like, that was me looking at him. Maybe that was my spirit head turning and looking at him. Then yeah. he noticed I was looking at him and was like, oh, you know, <laughs> I, I didn't, well, how's he noticing I'm here? He's not supposed to see me, sort of thing. But so, because I've still, I've got so much on the feeling that I want to do, I've kind of decided to skip that sort of mediumistic Yes. So I I never felt like I've ever been very mediumistic. Yeah. But since listening to AJ Miller, you know, I've sort of noticed feelings. Yeah. Like my dad, my dad, it's a feeling. It, so I describe it sort of reddish. It comes from over here, you know, and when it sort of comes into this part of me, you know, there's a feeling. I know it's my dad. Yeah. And I thought about a guide a few well probably nearer the beginning but I've decided a long you know quite a while ago if I can c connect with God God is going to be my guide you know yeah. so I haven't had that feeling from her but I thought I got some information from her but yeah just basically just concentrating on the feelings yeah that's good so like um, I suppose when you get into that as, as you know there's that space in between whatever you're, whatever you know feeling Whatever you're feeling pretty much is your car, your map, and your, you know, your destination, and it's everything. You're at home there. It's yeah, like it home, is. you know? Yeah. And when you, when you do any of this sort of feeling, emotions and stuff, it, the feeling is there's, there's nowhere I'd rather be. There's nothing better I could be doing right now yeah. than this. But all I'm doing is sitting on the floor and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to anyone else, I'm just doing nothing, you lazy git. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed, yeah. <laughs> That's good, yeah, like that. <clears throat> Did you ever, uh, like, uh, I think that the best, the, the external, the only external reference I can find to, to what we're speaking of, what someone might call is lucid dreaming. Would you? Yeah, I, I find that, that term pretty, um, you know, vague. Yeah. In a yeah. sense, and I, I, I haven't looked into it, but when someone says to me lucid dreaming, I think of one of those dreams where it's really, really real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's just all I think of on that point. Yeah, okay. No, and there's been, um, some, because someone introduced me to something when I was quite young. Um, actually, I lent him a book, but he said, he was the first person I sort of heard uh, do sort of pinch your face and then concentrate on that feeling and then and then move it around and you know so that was probably something when I was quite young I thought that's quite a nice thing to do to relax yeah I, I did it to sort of my stepson <coughs> as well when he couldn't sleep and, and that helped him too <laughs> but yeah so you know it's just these little things aren't they just sort of because I think when I got to the age of 14, I was bored of the world. I thought, is this all it's got to offer? This is crap. Yeah. And, then, and then I smoked a cannabis joint and it was like, okay, there's another... It felt like, yes, there's another level to this. Yeah. How how about you and the cannabis? Have you ever tried it? Um. Yeah, I never... I, I found... Like, well, anything, anything I tried, never... I never saw it as... Um, you know, I said, okay, well, here's a door I can go back in later on in life if I want to. If I literally have nothing else to do. With it. <laughs> uh, but I found... If I, if it's I, like killing yourself I, or heroin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it's really bad, <laughs> I'll, I'll go for this. You'll always be there when I, when, I, when I get my first pension check. I say, hey, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I, if, I, if I don't feel the, the, the need to taste that manky alcohol, then you know, I can go, you know, to go go try other things, you know, so, um, yeah, I just, uh, what was I going to say, I found that, yeah, by, 
you know, all the dif I, all the different substances. I was more fascinated by the effect of the substance rather than keeping the effect, holding on to the effect of it. Um, I wanted to see could um, of all the things I tried because they felt so good. I figured, you know, could I generate them in myself through experience? Um, so I spent about I'd say it was about six months to to a year in search of this and I was imagining all the things I did when I was a child before the age of six before I went to school so I went you know from zero to six when I felt that my will wasn't being impressed upon so you know I was able to run free with my hands in the air screaming and shouting or rolling down hills or you know riding my bike into a wall or whatever they, whatever I want to do climb trees you know and because you know back then when you when you hurt yourself a man if for some reason it healed within a day and a half or you know if you got a sting off a net or something it was gone in seconds and all you had to do was forget about what happened and just get up and go and get move on to the next thing so by imagining I said, asking my mind to bring me to all the things, to that feeling of all the things I achieved by myself without anyone else being involved. I, the first time I, I went in, in search of that, I, I came to a feeling before I came to an answer. And that feeling was, felt like I'd, I'd taken all the drugs under the sun, but there was no side effects. And anything I imagined, I seemed to have a feeling that I knew the answer to it. So I had the feeling of the answer to it without knowing anything. And so I felt ecstatic, I felt full of energy. I felt like I could feel everything, not knowing anything. So the other side of cocaine was rather than being completely um, arrogant, the most arrogant person in the city center at 2 a.m., <laughs> to just being someone who felt like if I wanted to know something, I could feel, I, I, I could search for the answer to feeling. So that's kind of the where where um, where where I kind of started off with all this, and the funny thing was, um, it was just I was just I just kind of smiled when he said the word bored when you were bored of the world, it was the the first thing clue I saw I said what is this boredom, so when I went to feel what boredom was boredom brought me to the when I, the feeling of having lost my self esteem, and then which brought me to the feeling of having my self esteem which was when I achieved something all by myself and no one has been involved. And it took me nine months, six to nine months to even to be able to describe it, <laughs> you know, which was, which, was, uh, which was long after I learned more English in that, that six months, six to nine months than I had in my whole school, you know. So um, I think that's having, um, rather than chasing all the hurt, I figured, why don't I just starting off when I just chase the best emotions all the the I wouldn't say positive emotions but all the times in my life when I had the most energy going through me you know from my experience um I didn't want to like I wanted to chase the 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 emotions by the magnitude of the energy rather than the perception of whether it's positive or negative and that way, well, it's it, 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 you know, I hate to use the term emotional roller coaster, but that's pretty much what it's been since, you know. Um, okay. Sometimes you're very, very high up and very, 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 very low down. But then when you do the emotional work, you're just going up on a rocket and you're coming down, you're skydiving down and you're going back up on a rocket the next day, you know. Because uh, it was a comment you, you helped me, you know, saying go into ignorance. Yeah, and yeah. at the time, I was felt like I should know what to sort out next. Yeah, you know, and you really helped me with that. But because by just going into that point where you think, right, I know nothing, you know, and sort of waiting for God, if you like, to to teach me something, you know, yeah. and that, and it was I think it was then, around then I realised, you know, that the soul, our own soul, knows what to deal with next. There, you know, there isn't any need for an intellectual what's the best thing to do next type of thing. Because it seems you've asked that more recently. You sort of, I don't know if I'm getting it wrong, that you're sort of wanting to know what to do next. 
Whereas, because yeah. I said to you before, didn't I? Take your own advice and go into ignorance. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, um, like um, I, you know, I I don't know. I, I, don't, I can't tell how long I've been going to the next one, the next one, the next one. But I think I enjoyed the magnitude of the first one from not doing it so much that I I might I, I think I'm looking for maybe to go. I want to feel the magnitude of the change. Um, I know that, and I remember AJ saying that you will never be overwhelmed, and that makes sense because if the soul only gives you the next thing, then you know you're 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 slowly you know like a like a little stream but but flowing uphill you know, for like uh, that's that's just what comes into my mind. But you know if I'm doing this every day, I may might want to take you know take a holiday and go and do an extreme one, you know, when I have the time off. <laughs> you know, and if I have a weekend to myself and, you know, I just sit down and relax and maybe do some meditation and say, oh, well, let's do, let's do something special here today. Yeah. Let's do something amazing, like, you know, that, 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 that may feel like a skydiving it probably won't, if challenge. You, you know. If you do that, it probably won't happen. Because yeah, oh, yeah. I've noticed that anticipation does not help. <laughs> if you're sitting there thinking this is going to be a good one, yeah. you're not in the right frame of mind to get it, isn't it? Yeah, you've yeah, got to be calm, and, yeah. and so quite often it's when, you know, if you've tried doing that, eventually when you give up, you sit yeah. down, you give up, and, and then it happens. Because I, I, yeah. so I think you're, there's something, sometimes something happens, it's like it's not from you. Yeah. Is that, you know, and I would say that most likely is God. Yeah. Because I think on a soul level, we are connected to God. We're God's child, you know. Yeah. So our soul knows God. Yeah. You know, was with God, is with God. You know, yeah. it's, 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 yeah. So by letting go and allowing seems to be the key to me. Yeah, and being in the right frame of mind. Yeah, so well, I I was I I suppose I was told uh, in the last couple of weeks that I may be still in addiction, so <laughs> maybe that's my that's my. Addiction. Who told you that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who told you that? Um, it was on um. Uh, it was but, on the I think the Divine Truth Forum. Are you on that forum? Well, yeah, I've muted again though. How, you muted again, yeah. Yeah, I could. Oh, you're muted, are you? Yeah. Because I've I've been kicked off it three times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> was it twice? Well, the first time I was the first to be kicked off. Oh, well, congratulations! Yeah. So that is a yeah. That's a feather in my cap. And then <laughs> I can't remember if I came back twice or once, but I came back with the name Christ. Yeah. Or Living Christ, I think I put. Yeah. And then so obviously they got me off straight away. The thing is, it seems to be a bit of a cop-out with them, to blame, they seem to blame, you know, and, uh, oh, but in a, anyone sort of, you know, they don't like, they're arrogant, if you've got, yeah. if you're not progressing, you know, it's because you're arrogant, so if they're not progressing, it's because of feelings of worthiness, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then they get spirit attacked, but we're spirit influenced. You know. Yes. And so I, I think they some use it as a bit of a cop out when they don't quite know what's going on. There's certainly a not a lot of feeling in that forum, and there's a lot of love there too. Yeah. But you know, when I was on the forum forum before, wow, the feelings that were coming up on the forum and how I felt when I wanted to reply to someone, you know. They've said something, and I want to give them my opinion. Is yeah. it like really sort of, you know, a lot? I'd say that's a lot of spirits with lots of the people. I think that group that AJ's had to deal with. I don't know, you know, why, but they seem to have more spirits than most. I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're slowly getting better. 
Yeah. yeah, if there was only a way to count them, you know, if we could do a roll call at the start of every every process to say, right, take off the name of which spirits are present and which aren't. <laughs> but when, because, you know, addictions always comes up, you know, and if anyone yeah. has got any vices, like with me, it's smoking, <clears throat> you know, now I'm beating myself up, yes, remind myself, yes, I'm addicted to things, but I think what they sort of neglect is how things can happen in moments. Yeah. And you read this in the R.J. Lee's books, when they're talking about levels, actually, they're saying, you know, you don't actually sort of just jump up one level, here's your certificate. You, you'll you get a taste of that high level, you know, be a f f fleeting moment. And then, and then you might be there for a bit longer, and, and a bit longer. So in you can have moments where, well, I know I have, you see, I know I connected with God. I know when me and God are, like, communicating, when I'm feeling God and God's feeling me, I know I've been there. And I go there, and I'm, more and more often, it's progressing my relationship with God as well. So I can, I can be addicted to wanting to smoke a fag one minute. Like, I've probably wanted to smoke a fag while we've been talking about three times. And the first time, because <coughs> smoking... Tobacco addiction is very much two seconds late. You've forgotten you wanted a fag. Yeah. So it's a very short, like, thing. And um, and then I thought of it again. I thought, well, you're not smoking. You don't seem to be a smoker. You're quite happy <laughs> without, <laughs> right? I can feed off that a bit with people. Yeah. If I'm around non-smokers and stuff, I can kind of, I can kind of get on their level and sort of be a non-smoker too. But yeah, now I want one because I've been talking about it so much. So addictions, as in terms of, and then I don't have many emotional addictions because I'm, I'm quite happy on my own most of the time. And um, so yeah, I think they go a bit over the top on addictions, because I yeah. think AJ's got addictions, so he's also being a hypocrite, because I think yeah. he's addicted to being right all the time. Or having the most knowledge on something in the room. I see quite a few times in his videos where someone says, so, you know, makes quite a good point. And he almost doesn't want to allow them the, you know, get one over on AJ sort of thing. Yeah. It's interesting, you were talking about him earlier and you said how his facial expression changes. <clears throat> yeah. You know, sometimes he can be quite manipulative up there. You know, and maybe it did serve as a motivation for you to to see the the the, the impact something's had on your life. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, but you know, it doesn't. It, he's not perfect, and like the thing on the forum, it's like you ask a question, and then the answer is, well, AJ says it's this, and then you're not allowed to question it anymore. Because you know. They basically say if AJ says it, it must be right. Which, as yeah. we mentioned earlier, isn't right. No, I see his most recent video I was watching, I think he was talking a lot about false beliefs, and that's where I left it actually for right. about a week ago. Yeah, so that's interesting that, that when he's talking about false beliefs. Um, you touched on something there just as you were speaking then about getting a taste of a higher level, and I think that's pretty much what's happened because. I, I was somewhere and now, you know, I, I really want to go back there, you know, so I'm trying to find, trying to, <laughs> maybe that's what I was talking about, taking a holiday, to take a holiday <laughs> in this place. <laughs> well, how did you get there in the first place? I, I, I think I just wanted to, I wanted to really, I wanted to feel all, I said, look, um, if I'm going to be depressed for the rest of my life, I said, let's just feel all the depression now instead, you know, rather than spread it out over the rest of my life. So, <laughs> so just give it to me all now, you know, let's feel all now. And then, and then I was abroad somewhere and I, I pretty much changed that overnight and I was never depressed anymore. I was never, I was never stressed or strained or anything like that. All, every situation changed. So I think that was probably the... So what the, happened then? How did you feel? It sounds a bit like you were ready to let go, like, you know, just ready, 
you know, when you've got that determination, you, I don't care if I die, let's have it, you know. Was yeah, it, was it yeah. a bit like that? And it, what... it was, yeah, over, yeah, over, um, there was, um, looking back, I think it, it happened over a couple of triggerings, so it didn't just happen straight away, I didn't just get an envelope down the chimney or anything like that, you know, saying, here's the answer. Um, it happened over a couple of days where I was triggered heavily, but for some reason I allowed, uh, you know, I didn't suppress anything. I just said, I just, I just allowed myself to implode over these little things that were happening to me, you know. So I was like, oh my God, what just happened? You know, I was wanting to cry and everything just because someone told me what I said mightn't be right or wrong, you know. And I felt the same age. I felt all, I felt like I was between one and six again, you know, like was only learning for the first time. And which, and, you know, I actually was just learning how to do this. So um, I pretty much, I think, was picking up where I left off at the age of four or five. So, um, Yeah, how far in memories can you go back? Have you managed? Um, I think you can, you, you can go back before six or seven, but you... You are you telling me? Are you telling me how how no, 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 how like young I, have you got? Like how young? <laughs> how yeah? How young have Remember, you got? Yeah, yeah. Was like I say, you know, there's there's the memories that we've always been reminded of by our parents, and you know, maybe at school we did something called childhood memories, and we went back and got a new memory. But yeah. when you get a new memory, you know, that you haven't remembered since the event yes everything comes back like you you've commented the feeling of being six years old you know yeah. not not many people talk about that because most people couldn't even get back to 20 you know <laughs> so saying that so how young have you managed to get back to would you say um that's uh you know, without, 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 um, okay, so I, I feel that I've gone back to being in the womb. Feel. I've gone yeah, back okay. to, good. Yeah, yeah. Back to preconception. Preconception? And being shown events when my, when my mother was a child. But I don't think, I don't know where that comes from. Was I just shown it or was, you know. Like preconception, yeah. So that was, you know, that's that's a bit of a sticky subject in Ireland at the moment. If it's, you know. Well, if you were if you were a new soul, preconception would be just being with God. Just some sort of, you know, lovely loving fuzz. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your yeah. firm, your firmware is being updated, <laughs> <laughs> ready for when you incarnate. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, do, I do think that because I think the newer generations, they always seem to know a bit more. You know, yeah. so I seem to think that because God's always changing, obviously. So yeah. those incarnate souls waiting for life, they are getting updated, if you like. And when yeah. they come down, they're new and modern and yeah. know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but you say you've, you've had feelings of being in the womb. You reckon? Yeah. It's, 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 did you um, get some? Did you get one where you like aware for the first time? I wouldn't quite call it awareness. I'd say it's um, it's like having a toolbox when I don't recognise the tools, but I just know I'm using them. Um, it's it's like not having my sense of touch. Oh, my sense. It's just being a feeling of being encased, um, a feeling of being warm, a constant temperature. So there's no fluctuation in temperature. I don't have that sense. Um, I, I have um, almost like that my arms and legs feel like they're receded into my, into my body. So it's like having a sense of touch up around my, up around, you know, like wiggling my feet, but feeling it up around my middle of my thighs or feeling a sense of touch with my hands and feeling it up, you know, right by my shoulders. Like um, like my fingers are wriggling up there, so oh, wow. um, I don't know really what to make of that. But well, that that well, you know that's what it's like, I suppose, isn't it? As the ar the yeah. arms and legs grow quite late, don't they? Yeah, like like looking at it in hindsight, it, you know, it makes sense. But you know, at the, at the time, it didn't make sense. It was just like, okay, I just put that there, that there, and that there, and that there. 
and then just to obviously just to do but a they, proper to get to the end of the feeling. Could they, um, could they have been like was there another feeling as well? Because obviously there are factual things we know about <clears throat> a fetus in the womb. Yeah. And you know we're we're in liquid as well, so we we're obviously not breathing air. That that, that was another thing. Um, I it was like. You know, when I be, you know, when I'm going through the feeling, and I'm trying to control, whether you know, trying to anticipate and control, and I start breathing heavily myself, and I'd hear like a voice telling me, "You don't need to do that because we don't breathe here," <laughs> and I'd say, oh, "Okay," and then I okay. go relax, and my breathing would just kind of go up slowly, you know, like when we're asleep. So it'd be like just behind my diaphragm, just the basic air that you need just to, um, just to do that. And then I'd, be, then I'd suddenly be calm. But it's, you know, you know, if your best friend told you something, you'd be like, Act, you know, not a hope, good luck. But why but would you think of, you need to breathe if you've never breathed before? Um, I suppose, it, like, with the anticipation and a, a, a logical or objective point of view, I feel, oh, well, I, well wherever I go in a way, I hope I'm able to breathe. Otherwise, you know, I might have a, you know, an asthma attack or something like that. But um, when it says, when you hear a voice that you know, a voice that you completely trust, I don't know whose voice it is, but there's an instant trust thing. Okay. And then, okay, then I don't need to do that. And, you know, this, this is actually, I went back trying to learn to swim. And when I was when I was trying to do the front crawl, it's the only swimming thing I couldn't do. Um, I, you know, I just tried to imagine and say, can someone come here and help me? Because uh, I'm trying to hold my breath under the water. Um, I don't, well, as in not inhale under the water. So, what I got an image was this, this, jelly, this, this beautiful jellyfish coming and sitting on my head. And then instantly, I was able to go down under the water. I could exhale all the air on my lungs and then go under the water. So I didn't need to go under the water with my, my lungs full of air. I just did it with, after expelling on the water, and I was walking around at the bottom of the swimming pool and, you know, really, really happy and content with myself. Until I realised, oh wait, no, you know, I do actually require air, so I'll have to come up, you know. But um, that, was only, that was only more recent, but... Um, going back that far, I think it's the certain feeling I was looking to remove was, that's just where where it entered my soul or entered my body. So I just happened to appear there, you know. I don't, I don't go there and look for, I don't say, right, bring me back to the room and let's sort out what's in that closet, you know. Um, I, don't think, I don't think it works like that. You either you go where the feeling goes or you don't, you don't go at all, you know. Okay. So I was, I was sort of slightly losing you a bit there. Yeah. Um, so you, you've gone back to that feeling of being in the womb quite a lot. Um, I have at random, let's say at random. So when, I mean, did because what I did is I sort of, when I, you know, I was sort of realising that remembering past events can bring up emotions and sort things out, and yeah. you can sort things out. <clears throat> so then, you know, I was wanting to go younger and younger. And so that's when I sort of felt like I might have had the feelings of when I was in the womb. Yeah. Is that the way you did it, or did you sort of differently? Um, I think it was. To, I think it was to do with um, the desire to feel a feeling, but without the interference of this my senses as I know them after birth. So, if there was a feeling without my senses, then that, to me, is where it would have happened. Where I learned an emotion, or learned a habit, or learned a way of dealing with an emotion from someone else. And one thing I realized was that is, it's always in the womb, because, you, you, you know, we don't have speech or, you know, other senses uh, developed yet, because um, we don't need them until we're born. and. In the room, we just we, straight away we, we take in how our mother might deal with situations, and we subsequently deal it deal with it the same way. So you know, someone said, "Well, you know, you're you're exactly like your mother. You're exactly like your father." Or I think we we there is no there is no way to I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. 
and we just we just take in the answer of what we believe we should do and that's 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 kind of when we, when i chase a certain memory or, or sorry a certain feeling and i go in there all i feel is i'm there it comes and then that's me from that point forward um so when i go in and then i say well, well i want to go to the point where i took that decision to to act like this or to feel like this and then i say well now i choose to not do it and i come out of the meditation or wherever i am and then all of a sudden it's only when you're in a situation where you would have acted differently in the past you realize that you're acting differently now we i don't i couldn't ever know the effect that changing something that happened to me in the womb will have in my life until I actually go and start doing it, you know? Um, maybe try something new or try something that I was afraid of before and keep trying them all, all over again until I find a change, another avenue I can go, I can go down and explore. You, you brought that up before as well, sort of, yeah. you know, you've had these feelings and, and then you want to know, you know, am I, am I different? Have I progressed? Am I yeah. better? And I, I, what I wanted to say to that was, I think, you know, that sort of change is very much like a, a flower opening. You know, you keep looking at it, it doesn't yeah. look like it's changed. <laughs> exactly. And then, you know, you forget about it for a while and then suddenly you realise it's open and blossomed. And Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and it might be after a month, I, uh, someone may say to me, said, like, Darren, you know, you used to be a lot different in that kind of situation. I said, oh, really, have I? Yeah, yeah. So, so to me, like I stopped looking for, you know, coming out of a meditation or something and hoping there's a medal around my neck, you know, <laughs> for every time I change something because, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work that way. No. And, you know, I can't take the self-esteem or I can't take the the false sense of I'm progressing, you know, here we go, get out of my way, everyone, you know, but um, I just had to, to change. That was, a, that was one of the things I changed. Why do I need to know I'm progressing? And also, um, yeah, I think that, yeah. <coughs> I've been thinking recently, <clears throat> you know, there's a kind of, um, you know, we are all in this together. Yeah. It's like, you know, someone's not going to go skyrocketing off, like, into seventh heaven, <laughs> leave, leaving everyone else behind. Because, you know, I think this is a learning experience for all of us. Yeah. And the way God would have planned it, you know, we I think we, we will all come up kind of together. So if someone's learning things that can can sort of bring them up a bit better, we're sort yeah. of held back a bit before we sort of, you know, can can maybe rub off on other people and and they get better. And you've got to admit, if everyone was really loving around us, it would be really easy, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, the, 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 I suppose the more we do rub out each other, the more the, the more the energy will flow. Like so, yeah. Uh, maybe there is some sort of um, uh, like a as you would static electricity by rubbing a balloon off her head that you can you know you rub off of someone you make an impression in their life and you do we, there's definitely something is generated from it. Yeah. You know, and then maybe that's how we all raise the level. But I think you're 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 definitely saying that you know when. I, I definitely spent uh, a few decades taking out of the pot, you know, and I think it's it's only right to put, <laughs> put some back in, but more back in, so that um, someone else can use it to, uh, you know, and have it grow, have it grow rather than you know slowly decline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for lack of a better explanation, like. Yeah. But it's nice. It's a nice feeling. I, I mean, I definitely feel this finally beyond, on the path to the truth. You know, this is where the answers lay. It, yeah. It's in God, it's in emotions, it's, you know, this is the right path. There isn't yeah. going to be a, you know, scientific discovery that leads to everyone finding it, you know, it. the way is inwards and... Yeah, I don't think there's enough, there's enough money in the world to, and enough scientists in the world, if you paid them over time, to, that they could come up with it quicker than... Just simply going through the process, like yeah. Know. And I think lots of people are getting there w through different yeah. ways, you yeah. know. Is and some people get a bit of truth here, a bit of truth there, you know. And slowly, like a jigsaw puzzle, yeah, it will come together. And 
be good. Exactly, the puzzle that's always missing one piece in the box. <laughs> but then, you know, like I say, like, you know, then once you have progressed a bit, you know, you still want to progress more, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's yeah. not like you just sit back and think, oh, yeah, I'm better than I was a couple of years ago. You know, now I can just kick back and do nothing. You you still want more. Yeah. You want to be more. Have you? I mean, you you felt loving things. You felt love in your heart. Yeah. Like, and what what would you say your the heart of your soul, or perhaps even just that is your soul. The heart of your soul is your soul. But yeah, like you had some love sort of come it's, into it's, them. It's, it was um, it's just quite unusual. I I find that it feels like it feels introvert and extrovert at the same time. If you know, it's possible that there's you know, so it's a, it's a flowing of two. If it's I I I'm trying to imagine what kind of a plane that it exists on or where or that it moves through. But it seems it seems to just it seems to get more powerful and uh, I I can't really describe the magnitude of it. But it's it's. You no, know, around certain people, it's after growing, and other people, it's just it feels the same. You know, I think it's down to maybe the those that are willing to accept it and pass it on themselves, and it's only around those kind of people that I might feel that um, that it's going through me and coming coming out of me and going through me at the same time. You know, because you know I I'm I'm willing to accept it and willing to to offer it as well. You know. Mm. To to anyone, if someone's passing me in the street and they feel, oh, okay, what was that like, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, there, maybe that's someone who's willing to, to offer yeah. and someone who's willing to give it back, you know? Because so. more often than not, you get if you're walking past someone in the street, you're getting, like, not loving feelings towards you, yeah. more often than not. <laughs> well, there is, uh, there's, there is no one to make it cross the road as well. Like. <laughs> but yeah, I, and, then, and then suddenly you walk past someone, you feel this, like, love, and you give them a smile, right? <laughs> and you're like, but it, but then, and then, you know, if you've had some love, you know, and then you're more likely to be loving to that, to the person walking down the street. Yeah. Even if they are coming at you with knives. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I've really noticed, like, you know, I'll say hello and smile, and then they suddenly change and they're like, yeah. hello. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> what they thought wasn't true. And yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, love begets love and... Uh, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I just, yeah. I don't I, I just, there's no words, there's no words in this dictionary. For <laughs> no, it's the only this word love, isn't it? But it's such a massive thing. Yeah. And then, absolutely. you know, and we've got a mum and dad who's there for us, whether we yeah. like it or not, you know? <laughs> yeah, the, the last bit is important, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I had this realisation that every time we breathe in, it's like a demonstration of God's love for us. So, if you ever yeah. thought that God wasn't loving you all the time, you know, but here we go, every time we breathe in, we're receiving that, that gift, that life, yeah. that love from God. So, it's like, yeah, it's just nice to know, I guess, and appreciate when you breathe in and that's like yeah. our connection so eventually um so because i've got on meditation levels where all i can feel is the heart but in the center of my chest sort of beating and that's like me and then the, the sense of the egg on the edge of my nostrils and that's all i'm aware of of myself and <clears throat> and it's like eventually we won't need the breathing bit. We won't need to be dependent on God. Yes. As we are now. And will be for God knows how long. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so yeah. So that's how I think it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we've got it. So how long have we been talking? Uh, exactly oh, an hour and a half. hour and a half. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So, I suppose what I might want to do so is um, I I we could probably compile a couple of questions um over the next couple of days, and I can send them to you in an email, and we could have a more like um, less less tangented 
you know, I'm more kind of um, focused. If willing, yeah, more focused on on on. I, I don't know what whatever, whatever it will be, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm up for that. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks very much for the call. Yeah. It was, uh, Probably no one will watch it. You know how few views I get. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I know I can be a bit boring and tangent, but I think I'm speaking about important subjects. Yeah, I so, think I think well, um, on a need to know basis that I think it's on a need to know basis. Somebody goes searching and they'll find it, and you know, they be they be led to it. You know, you know how random the the YouTube suggestions can be. You know, when you when you first up, when you first load the web page. I've certainly had some things come on and said, oh, what's this? I didn't even know why it's there, but it's yeah. there. Yeah. And I watch it and I said, oh, that's strange. That's, that's kind of what I was looking for, you know, so. Yeah. Has God got a hand in it? Maybe. Is that hopefully? <laughs> 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 I think right. I'd rather that than, the, uh, than the, the, was it the spy agency or whoever else is trying to, trying to, trying to program us, or yeah. allegedly so. <laughs> They're probably trying. <laughs> yeah, they are trying, trying, yeah. All right. That's the get paid for, so. Awesome, Dara. All it's right. been it's been a good chat, and we'll do it again. Yeah, take cool. care, man. All right, ciao. Bye. 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 Bye.